Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's video is going to be an updated palette collection video for 2019. And I have a lot of palettes. I think the last time I filmed this for 2018, I had 109, something like that. I don't know how many I have now. I've decluttered definitely um, as the year has gone on between 2018 and 2019, but I know I've definitely added to it. So I'm gonna start this off. It's gonna be a very long video and I hope you enjoy. I'm gonna kick this off by talking about my Too Faced palettes because they're definitely the palettes that I have the most of in my entire collection. So the first one here is an oldie but a goodie. This is the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette. And I have the super old packaging when it was a lot thicker, which honestly I find very cumbersome. I feel like I don't reach for this palette um, that often just because it's in bulkier packaging. And I know that sounds silly, but it's absolutely true because I reach for my slimmer chocolate bar palettes far more often than I do for this one. So this was the original that kicked it off for me, I guess. This is when I started to fall in love with Too Faced. And it's weird for me to say that because when I look at this, it's so brown and neutral and that's not necessarily something that I'm drawn towards. But I loved the whole chocolate bar theme. I loved the idea. The names were so much fun and it just really made me fall in love with the brand. So the chocolate bar palette, the first one was quite good, but the one that I really fell in love with was the semi-sweet chocolate bar palette. And sadly, they no longer make this. This is gone off the market and that makes me really sad because it's my absolute favorite. And I think that's strictly because it's much more warm in tone and there is that fun pop of blue color. I found this to be a palette that I reached for a lot when I was going on vacation because I wanted something that was neutral, but also kind of like, summery and fun and these shades down here uh caramel and bonbon really sort of made that for me and also i fell in love with the shade peanut butter and man that was such a still is a fun color to put through my crease later on too faced released the chocolate bonbons palette and i wasn't really taken with this because i don't love super girly things which is kind of strange then that i like too faced as a brand because they focus heavily on pink and super feminine girly stuff anyway the pink and the heart shapes kind of maybe go wah wah but i did actually really enjoy this and it was a lot more cooler tone compared in comparison to what they had done before so i've gotten some good use out of this palette i do feel like it's fun to pull out especially for whatever reason around the holidays i do really like this one continuing their chocolate bar palette series the white chocolate bar this one got so much hate online but I really enjoyed it. It's a palette that I reach for when I wanna have a lot of lid shades. It doesn't necessarily just work on its own because it really only has the black that actually works. This color over here, Smoked Sea Salt, is garbage. It does not work very well. But the colors work very well for the lid and some crease colors, so I did find myself really enjoying this palette. And around that same time, they came out with the Too Faced Chocolate Gold palette. Now I was really excited about this one because the colors are so, well, they're, it's funny, they're jewel toned-ish, but it's mostly just because they're shimmery. There's not a ton of jewel toned actual colors in here. And no, I haven't finished this shade over here. I just dropped the palette by accident and the shade smashed to pieces. Anyway, ugh, I never get tired of that scent. I love the colors in here, especially that chocolate gold shade up there. Super vibrant, like that is a really good yellow gold. Next up is the Clover palette, which is so much fun from the outside. I've mentioned before, I'm not a dog person, but there is a black cat, so I'm very excited about that. I was excited for this palette because it had a little bit more color for Too Faced. That's not something they always incorporate into their palettes because they are very focused on neutral tones because that is what sells. But I like this one because it, it screamed a little bit louder colors for me. I do reach for it occasionally, but it's not one of my ones that I find I'm gravitating towards all the time. And then the Sweet Peach palette. Oh, I love this one so, so freaking much. This peach scent is my favorite out of, well, between the two that the Too Faced makes. I much prefer the Sweet Peach scent over the Peaches and Cream one. This one just makes me happy. This whole palette is so much fun to use. I travel with it often just because it's a very easy, neutral look to wear. But there's also some louder colors in here. Well, I guess more specifically, I'm talking about candied peach. I really love putting that sort of neon orange peach through my crease. And then one of my absolute favorites now, the Gingerbread Spice Palette. I love this thing so much. This is such a good palette. 
We do have more of that jewel toned aesthetic over on this side, but it's kind of these two rows here that really make me happy. This loud pink up here, oh, so beautiful. I love the orange. I love Hot Toddy, which it's funny on camera, I'm looking at the viewfinder over here. It looks quite pink, but from the angle that I'm looking at it right here, it looks very orange. It just shifts, yeah, there you go. It shifts color depending on what angle, angle you're looking at it. I love this thing to pieces and it's funny because this is one that I want to travel with because the colors are so good but I'm too scared to because if I broke this or it shattered or I just lost it I'd be heartbroken. I want a backup of this one even though you can't get it anymore just because I love it so much. Next up is the Just Peachy Mattes palette. I love this one. I love this one so much. It's all matte except for Peach Sangria over there which has a hint of a sparkle but it basically acts as a matte. This is so beautiful and it's funny it looks relatively boring if you're just looking at it you see mostly neutrals but you can make some really vibrant looks out of here especially using just peachy over here on the lid it looks like a regular pale peach but that can come across quite neon. I love this one so much. Sadly the next one they put out in that sort of packaging the white peach one I don't like this thing. I don't like it at all. I never reach for it. I should probably just get rid of it, but something is making me hold on to it for posterity. It's just garbage. It's a bad palette. The shades in here are all sort of on the same level. They don't really add a whole bunch of dimension to it. And honestly, I'm getting tired of seeing like a random black in palettes all the time. I do like them occasionally, but in this palette in particular, it really doesn't work out because everything is so pale. So this was such a dud and I think Too Faced knows it too because it routinely goes on sale. Next up, the Natural Matte Palette. I never actually owned their previous versions of the Natural Matte or the Natural Eyes Palette. So this was my only um, use of this sort of format is in this, I don't like this bulkier packaging. It'd be fine if it was flat, but it's got a bit of a dome top and it makes it so hard to store. It's really irritating. Anyway, this is all matte and the colors are really pretty. It's a great sort of uh, workhorse palette if you need a matte that's just gonna go with other shimmery shadows. I do really enjoy this. And then the Natural Eyes palette, which is one that has been famous for years and they've kind of done iterations of the colors over probably 10 years at this point. This is their latest iteration and I do find the tones okay-ish but not necessarily something I'm drawn towards. I do prefer the Natural Matte palette just because shimmery brown shadows are not something I really reach for. I never put them on my lid and I'm certainly not putting them through my crease. So I don't reach for this palette that much, but I do find the quality is quite good. In sticking with the natural palettes, I have the natural face palette. Now, this is funny. I do feel like this works better for deeper skin tones. So I don't always love this on my face. This bronzer up here, Sunny Honey, is quite good for me, but I do feel like Tropic Like It's Hot works much better on me as a blush. I can't really get away with wearing that as a bronzer. It just doesn't look right. I do really enjoy the blush colors. Pink Wink and Pink Sand are gorgeous, but the highlight shades over, ooh, I'm trying to hold this open, on this side are a little bit strange for me. So they don't really work on my skin tone, I feel like. They work on somebody who's a little bit deeper. So Starlight is kind of a, I don't know, it's a pink shifting highlight don't love it on my face. And then Satin Sheets, which is a repetition, I believe, of an eyeshadow that's been in another palette, just doesn't work on me. It's a pink gold, and I don't really like how it looks on my cheek. But, I mean, it's a nice face palette, which can be hard to find, so if you're in a slightly deeper skin tone, I think you would enjoy that. I have some mini palettes here. The Tickled Peach palette made me so happy because I want them to put out more in the Sweet Peach range, and they don't seem to be doing it but then they released this guy, which made me really happy. It does work really well with this palette. I will say that I think by itself it's fine, but I do want a little bit more louder shades in here because the color that I would tend to put through my transition, the one up here, is shimmery, and I don't really love that, but this is a beautiful little palette. And then there is the, oh, which one is this called? It's the Sugar Cookie Palette. This one's cute too, but I actually find the shadow quality is not that great in this one. I kind of struggle whenever I'm putting an eye look together with this one because I don't feel like they actually adhere to the lid very well. I have gotten some good looks out of it, but I do feel like it's a little bit more work than Too Faced shadows tend to be. I like the scent though. I do also have the Sweet Peach Glow Palette. This has a, blon a, bronzer, a bronzer, a blush, and a highlighter. I love this thing. So much. This is such a beautiful face powder look when you combine them all together. I do wish the bronzer was the size of the blush because I feel like you're more likely to use up 
a bronzer that's this small than you are a blush that's this size. So I do wish they'd switch those around, but for the aesthetic of it, I can understand why they kept it that way. The smaller palettes that I have over here are part of their Tutti Fruity collection. So this one is the Sparkling Pineapple Eyeshadow palette, which is a little bit more of a neutral cast, but I do really like this fun green um, brown color. It shifts the duochrome, and this gold is a lot of fun over here. I did recently bring this with me on like a two-day trip, and I enjoy using it for that. The smell on that is very pineapple juice. It smells very artificial though. The other one that I have from the Tutti Fruity collection is the Razzle Dazzle Berry Eyeshadow Palette. And the, oh, okay, first of all, the colors are absolutely beautiful, but I hate the scent on this. This is too much berry and bleh, I just don't like it. Anyway, the shadows themselves are gorgeous and I do feel like the quality is actually really elevated in these palettes. The shimmery colors in particular are unreal they're a smooth buttery texture and i've never seen Too Faced put out a shadow that's that shimmery almost foiled in texture and i want to see more of it from them so i also have the little black book of bronzers in here this is kind of like a legacy product at this point because i haven't used this in a very long time and they've actually re-released so many of these bronzers in different formats but i do like the original uh chocolate soleil scent that they used to put out. The new ones that they put out do not smell the same, and I know some people like them, but I don't like them as much. I also have this Love Flush Blush Palette. This is something that they've long since discontinued, and even I don't think you can get the blush in the larger heart compacts anymore, but I keep it because it's quite a good range of um, blushes to reach for. But I have to say, it's not something I would bring with me on vacation just because it's so large. This thing is enormous. I have another beloved palette over here. This is the Life's a Festival palette, and I've talked this thing up so much since they launched it last summer, I guess. This is the perfect rainbow for people who don't know how to wear color, I would say. This is so much fun. I love the colors in here. Mystic Rain here is like a purple with a teal duochrome, but it's on the subtle side of things. It's beautiful, and I've really never seen a shade like that before. This is one of my absolutely absolute favorite palettes. Moving on to their tin packaging. This is the Sugar Pop palette. Love this guy. What a fun little colorful palette. The only thing that sucked in here was this brown shimmery color. So bizarre. Too Faced makes great shimmery brown colors, but for whatever reason, the one they put in this palette is just terrible. But I did really enjoy the other colors in there. And here's one that so many people love this one, and I'm part of the people that love it too. This is the Peanut Butter and Jelly palette. I love this one so much. I love the smell of it. I love the theme. I wish they'd done more with the peanut butter and jelly theme because this thing sold like hotcakes. And sadly, I think they've discontinued it now, which makes me really sad because it was so good. And they did kind of try to continue that theme of the peanut butter and jelly palette with the peanut butter and honey palette, but this one was such a dud. This was so, so bad. Oh did not enjoy this. The colors look pretty. I mean, fundamentally, they're quite pretty, but it just didn't perform very well on my eyes. And I've kept it because I don't want to part with it, but I really do not reach for that one. I feel like I used it twice and I was like, no, I'm done. And the totally cute palette. This one's sweet. It comes as a pink packaging and then you can put stickers on it, which I told myself I wasn't going to, and then I did anyway. So this one is a lot of fun. I reach for this actually quite frequently. I feel like the colors in here are very complimentary and they just work so prettily to get prettily nicely together. I even use Storm Cloud, which is a shimmery dark blue on the outer corner of my eye, which I don't put shimmer out there very often, but I do sometimes. And with that color, it actually works out really well. I love this guy. I've also got the Natural Love palette here. I think this was released maybe two years ago now. And honestly, I don't know why I got it. It's one of my makeup regrets. It's just a whole lot of neutral and I don't reach for it very often. I got it because I think this was at like the peak of my Too Faced hype and I was just like, I have to own every single palette that they put out. But honestly, it's so boring to me. I never reach for this guy. I still refuse to part with it, but I, it doesn't get used very often. Another regret, which I should actually put in a video, this massive brick. This was the Too Faced Anniversary palette uh, for 20 years, I guess it was. I love the concept of it, but in practice, I think it's quite bad. 
So I don't even, I know I reviewed it. I don't even remember what I said about it, but I have not reached for this since I posted that review video. So the top line is all of their original eyeshadow colors in updated formulas. And then the bottom line is like their reimagined take on that eyeshadow. Cool concept, terrible execution. I don't like how big this thing is. And people say it smells like birthday cake. Uh-uh. It smells like yogurt-covered raisins. Next is the Stardust Palette by Vegas Nay. I love this one so much. Great colors in here, even though there's a lot of neutral. I reach for this when I know I want to look good because the colors in here, for whatever reason, just really suit me. That was a fantastic collaboration. And then here was a really, really bad collaboration. This was the Power of Makeup by Nikki Tutorials. <sighs> this is just bad. This was just bad. I think the color combinations are weird. It's like they wanted to be able to include everything and they just failed because nothing works together. Ugh, did not like this one. All right, moving on to holiday palettes. I've got this little set. I kept this one because I think it was the first PR item I ever got by Too Faced and I just wanted to keep it because it felt very special. So it's got three palettes inside. Peppermint Mocha, Eggnog Latte, and then gingerbread cookie. These are more holiday ones. This is the natural beauty palette, the super fun night palette, which honestly doesn't look that different from natural beauty. I believe in pink, which is a lot more pink toned. I have the best year ever. This one's quite fun. I really like the color combination on that one. The Mary Macarons palette. I like this one. I think it got crap reviews, but I did really enjoy it. I think the colors in there are quite pretty. I've got the Christmas in New York, the Chocolate Shop palette. This one is quite large and honestly, a lot of the shades are repeated from previous holiday palettes. They tend to do this. They put out this sort of like gift packaging idea that you could give to somebody. It's like a newbie makeup lover and I think that's a good idea, but for a makeup hoarder, you kind of end up with a lot of the same colors. So this was the A Few of My Favorite Things palette. This came out for 2013, I think. And this, this one I really like. And I still reach for this one. The colors in here are really, really beautiful. And I feel like they go really well together. And then the last Too Faced palette I have is the one from, I think, Holiday 2014. This is the Everything Nice palette. And they were just following in the same vein as the A Few of My Favorite Things palette. So same sort of layout, idea, and shadows. Also really like this one. I really enjoyed that bottom row because they're so vibrant and I feel like the shadows were actually quite good quality. Okay, next up is ColourPop and the one that started it all, basically why I am now obsessed with ColourPop is this Chasing Rainbows palette. This is a beautiful palette. I brought this with me on vacation to England and Ireland, wore it for 10 or 11 days straight and did not get tired of it. The shadow quality is fantastic. The color selection is beautiful. I love this thing so much. I next got the Yes Please palette, and it's funny, I like the color combination in here, but I'm not as enamored with it as everybody else seems to be. I do feel like the shadow quality is not as good in this palette compared to the Chasing Rainbows palette. I do need to play with it a little bit more. I think I've only worn it two or three times, but it was okay, but not amazing. However, now I'm obsessed with the ColourPop 9 Pan eyeshadow palettes. So I have the Just My Luck palette here. It's a green palette, but there's a lot of blue cast in a lot of the shadows. I then have the Ooh La La palette here. Love this, shadow quality is fantastic. And also the pink is very loud, which I like. I don't like soft pinks, I want them to be neon. I have the It's My Pleasure palette. Beautiful purples in here. Such good quality on these shadows and they're like 12 bucks, which is wild. And then I have their latest, no, that's not true. They have a blue one now. Uh, this is the latest to me, the Main Squeeze palette, which is focused around red colors. <sighs> so beautiful. Haven't played with it yet, but very excited to. Next up is Kat Von D. I've got the Mi Vida Loca Remix palette. Beautiful, beautiful palette, but I almost never reach for it because I find this packaging so cumbersome. It's really annoying to have to pull it out all the time like this but I keep it together because I do actually enjoy the aesthetics of the packaging. I then have the Metal Matte Palette, another really large palette that I find awkward to pull out just because it is so big. 
but the colors in here and the shadow quality is really excellent. So when I reach for it, I'm always happy with the eyeshadow looks that I put out. Next, I've got the Shade and Light Eye Palette, which is all matte and all neutral tones, and this thing is fantastic. This is the thing that I will reach for on Halloween when I'm trying to look like a different person or a different character because you can add so much dimension to your face and to your eyes with this palette. I also have the 10th Anniversary Palette here, which I really like the packaging on this. It's very luxe feeling. And then the shadows in here are a bit of a rainbow palette, which always makes me happy. Do really enjoy the shadows in here. I feel like it's a little bit more of a mature rainbow in comparison to like the Mi Vita Loca Remix palette. And then lastly, I've got my favorite Kat Von D palette. So this is the Alchemist Holographic palette. It's not holographic, but it is a bunch of ivory shift duochromes. And I love this so much as using um, on my cheekbone as a different color highlighter. The shades in here are absolutely beautiful. Next up are my Tarte palettes. I'm gonna kick this off with the Off the Cuff palette. I've talked about this so much on my channel, but it really is one of those perfect face palettes. It's got a bronzer and four blushes, and I bring this with me on vacation all the time. Sadly, it was a 2013 holiday launch, so you can't get your hands on it anymore. I do also have this Pin Up Girl palette, which I feel like Tarte was trying to replicate how good the Off the Cuff palette was by continuing to launch like five shades, but these are all blush and there's no bronzer in there, so that makes me really sad. I also don't reach for this one as much just because I find the packaging is really large and unnecessary. I also have the Be A Mermaid and Make Waves palette. Oh, I love this one so much. Probably because the shade Bubbles down here is undupable as far as I've seen. It's like a purple with a blue shift to it. It's wild. Love the shadow qualities. I play with this mostly in this sort of area down here, but I think the colors are fantastic. I also love Tarte's Make Believe in Yourself palette. This was another good launch, probably two years ago now. They're all basically lid colors because they are quite shimmery. There's one matte in here, which I would use as a transition color. But if I want something in this color range as a shimmery lid color, I will definitely reach for this palette because the shadows are beautiful. I have the Tartist Pro palette. Love this one so much. I love the shimmery colors are kind of relegated to that side row uh, column. And then the mattes take over the bulk of the palette. I saw a few people saying that they didn't love this palette when it first came out, but when I tried it out, I was blown away. The shadow quality is excellent, and I really enjoyed playing with this one. I also have the Tarte Graveyard Girl Swamp Queen palette. I really liked playing with this palette a lot, actually. I find the shadows are better than the face products, so I feel like this is too chunky. This one is way too orange on me, but the shadows themselves are really lovely. I also have the Tartlet Toasted Palette. This was okay. I did like it, but I feel like I bought it when warm eyeshadow palettes were starting to like blow up everywhere. And Tarte was a little late on the boat with this one, but I still wanted to try it out. And it's good, the quality is good, but I do feel like there are better warm toned eyeshadow palettes out there. This one though, the Tartlet in Bloom palette, I thought this was going to be so boring because it just looks like a basic neutral eyeshadow palette. Come to find out that I really enjoy this. This is a beautiful palette. I brought it with me on like a short weekend trip I don't, because I wanted to force myself to use this palette and I was pleasantly surprised with just how much I enjoyed it. Next up is Wet n Wild. I've got the Not A Basic Peach palette, which is probably my favorite out of the ones that Wet n Wild has put out recently. I really enjoyed this one and it's not expensive either, which is so nice. There is the Rosé in the Air palette, which is really just their modern renaissance dupe palette. Quite nice. I brought this with me on vacation instead of bringing my ABH palette, and I did really enjoy it. I feel like the colors are completely comparable. Not as nice in quality, but still really good. And then, of course, the revamped Comfort Zone palette by Wet n Wild. I did have the original one, but I finally got rid of it because I do have the updated one. Really like this one, and it's kind of like one of those staples in everybody's collection, right? I used to collect a lot of Wet n Wild limited edition stuff, um, but I've gotten rid of most of it just because I wasn't using it. But I refuse to get rid of this guy. This is the California Roll palette. I don't even know when this came out. But I bought it because it had a red shadow in it and I was so excited and I do really enjoy the color combination in here. It's a good small palette. Now these next three I haven't tried out yet because I am meant to be testing them out. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. The first one is my Glamour Squad, which is mostly neutral with a pop of gold and a deeper red. And then this one is the VIP Purple palette, which I think is replacing their Oh, I don't remember the name of it now, but it was a purple themed palette. So I'm excited to see this one, although it looks like they've replicated that gold from this one. 
And then this one kind of gets me excited. This is the Stop Playing Safe palette, and I really like it because it's got a shimmery green and a deep shimmery blue. So I'm really looking forward to playing with these. Um, they'll be forthcoming on the blog at some point. Next are my Anastasia Beverly Hills palette, and I have mostly face palettes as opposed to eyeshadow palettes. But the one shadow palette that I do have is the Modern Renaissance palette. <sighs> I never get tired of this one. It is so beautiful. I don't feel like their recent color combinations really draw me in that much, but this one, this one stole my soul, and it's mostly because there's like three red or deep pink colors that really drew me in, because at the time that this was launched, most eyeshadow palettes did not have a red color in it, so this one definitely got me excited. And then the rest are all glow kits. So the Moonchild palette, I use this constantly. This is so, so nice. And much like the Kat Von D Alchemist palette, this has um, light, pale, ivory shifting duochrome colors. I tend to wear Lucky Clover a ton, and then uh, Blue Ice and Star quite a bit as well. I have the Aurora Glow Kit, which I didn't like when it first launched, and then I find myself reaching for it much more in recent years. I smashed this color and then repressed it, which is why it looks terrible. Apparently some of the color leached out. Anyway, weird, weird. Uh, colors in this palette, but I do really enjoy it. And then I have the Gleam Glow Kit, which was one of those limited edition ones that they put out years ago, and I really don't know why they didn't keep this one, because a lot of people love the colors in here. And I'm one of them. This is a great highlighting palette. I also have the Sweets palette here. This one is another limited edition one. I get so annoyed with these, but the colors are a lot of fun in here. The only one that I find is a little bit weird is butterscotch down here. It's a fun color, but it's got so much silver glitter in it and it will go everywhere on your face. But uh, Sassy Grape and Marshmallow and Taffy as well are ones that I get quite a bit of use out of. Although Moonchild is my favorite like fun colored highlighting palette, this Nicole Guerrero palette is my favorite like normal colored highlighters. This one is so, so good. And I didn't initially buy it when it first came out. I was loaned it by my friend Julie, who let me do a blog post on it, but then I returned it back to her. And I was so sad afterwards because it had been, at that point, sold out and I couldn't get my hands on it anymore. But the colors in here are otherworldly. They are so beautiful on my cheekbone area. I love it so much. And I really wish that they bring this one back because I think a lot of people would really enjoy it. Moving on to Violet Voss, I have my most recent palette on top, which is the Sugar Crystals palette. This took so many months before it finally came to Canada, and I still don't see it on Sephora online. You have to buy it in stores. Oh, I haven't used it yet. I've only swatched it. There will be a video coming, but I've been waiting months for this. This launched in February, and I'm filming this video in June. I waited so long for this because I just bought it two days ago. I'm so excited for this palette. I also have the Violet Voss Rainbow Palette. I held off on buying this for a really long time because they're all shimmery colors, and I find that kind of annoying in a palette, but I did get it at iMats, and I really like it. I reach for this quite a bit for a lid shade, and the colors in here are absolutely beautiful. I have the Violet Voss Holy Grail Palette, which the colors in here are really pretty, but when I used it, I wasn't always in love with the looks that I was creating. I've since gone back to it and found more color combinations that I enjoy, um, but it's funny, on first use, I was not in love with this thing, even though judging by the colors, I should have been. The Violet Voss palette that I fell in love with on first use, though, is this hashtag palette. Whew, this is gorgeous. This is the perfect sunset eye look, I think. The colors in here are beautiful, and I'm never disappointed when I put together an eyeshadow look with this palette. Of all the Violet Voss palettes that I've tried, this is one, the one that I definitely recommend the most. Next up is Urban Decay, and I'm gonna start it off with my oldest palette, which is the Vice 3 palette. 2013, 2014, I don't know, something like that. This was the best Vice palette, in my opinion, that Urban Decay has ever put out. I love this thing so intensely, but we're like, what, five or six years later now, and I do feel like the shadow quality is starting to disintegrate on it. I did reach for this more recently because I wanted to get a little bit more use out of it, and that's when I started to notice that the shadow quality wasn't as good as it used to be. But I'm still not parting with it because it's still okay, and the colors in here are just 
They're stunning. They're so good. I also have the Alice Through the Looking Glass collaboration palette, which my friend Haley just recently regifted to me. She bought it and then she wasn't using it, so she gave it over. And I really like the colors in here. They're a lot of fun. I don't really go for the neutral colors, but like the greens and the blues uh, and the pinks and the orange are really good in here. So I've been enjoying playing with this palette, even though it's a few years old now. I think it came out three years ago, maybe. And of course, I still have my original Urban Decay Naked palette. This was the first eyeshadow palette that I ever owned, much like most people I would suspect. And my friend Dorothy brought this up from the US for me. And I honestly, I haven't stopped playing with it since. I don't use it nearly as much as I used to, but this used to be my go-to eyeshadow palette when I was going for a job interview. And you can see that I've hit pan on a few colors here, which is really exciting because this is the only palette that I've ever hit pan on. I still love this thing. There's a lot of shimmer in it and maybe some of the colors are a little bit dated, but I love the original Urban Decay Naked palette. I have the Naked 3 palette in some fun packaging because I went to a PR event when they opened their Square One store and they just did a little bit of fun detailing on it. I don't think I've used this one though because I did already own the Naked 3 palette and I ended up giving it away once I got this one. But then, you know, once I got this one, I then realized that I never reached for the Naked 3 palette, which is why this has remained completely untouched. I also have the Naked Heat palette here. This is good. The shadow quality is good. The colors are pretty, but it's such a one note palette. And given that there are 12 shadows in here, I find it really surprising that every time I put together an eyeshadow look, it looks identical to every other eyeshadow look that I've created using this palette. Again, good quality, love the colors, but they could have easily just made that a six pan palette. And then more recently, I have the Naked Reloaded palette. And I didn't think I was gonna like this thing, and I still think the palette packaging is terrible. But the colors in here are really good. I have really enjoyed playing with this palette. And I was so skeptical about it too, because I was like, there's no way they can replace the Naked Original palette. They just can't do it. There's nothing that's gonna compare. Might as well eat my words now because I think this is a good replacement for the original Naked palette. I have this random Urban Decay palette that almost nobody talks about and I don't think I've seen advertised in very many places. This is the Nocturnal Shadow Box and wow, I still have a brush in there. This is oddly good. The color combinations that I get out of this thing are so pretty and it's a palette that I don't know, no one talks about. It was out years ago and I refuse to get rid of it just because some of the colors are perfect in here. In particular, this shade Lounge is gorgeous. It is so pretty. And oddly enough, that color is in this palette, the After Dark palette, or at least the shade name is the same, but it's not the same color whatsoever. And that really annoys me because the one in here is so much better, and yet my pan is much bigger in this palette. So the After Dark palette is fun to use, but they're all shimmery, which again, can be really annoying to use if you're just gonna be using this palette by itself. I find that's the case with most shimmery eyeshadow palettes. I just don't know why people don't include at least a few mattes when they're putting out a palette like this. But anyway, I do actually really enjoy the colors in here. I feel like this brown is way out of place. They didn't need that at all because the rest of it is so colorful. But it was a good launch and I don't think it did very well because I think they removed it from the market within a year of putting it out. And one palette they should have kept on the market for sure is the Electric palette. This is just so inspiring to me. The colors in here are so much fun to play with. And if I'm ever feeling bored with my makeup, I reach for this and put together an eyeshadow look using combinations that I've not done before. And I'm always happy and always inspired. So I really love the Electric palette. Next is Suva Beauty. This is their Cupcakes and Monsters palette. I bought this at iMats a few years ago because I was eager to try the brand because they're Canadian. These shades are all matte and I do feel like they apply very nicely, but I don't feel I reach for this palette by itself very often because I think the color combination of these shadows together is a little bit strange. They do work really well with other palettes, but by itself, I just don't tend to reach for it as a singular palette. I then have the Block Party palette, which it's a weird one. It's a really weird color combination, but I feel like if you're playing with this, you actually pull out looks that you might not otherwise have tried. I think I put the, oh, what did I do now? I did the orange with like this teal at 
there and it actually worked out really well and I was surprised because that's not a color combination I would have ever put together. So fun little palette, strange color combinations but oddly good. And next my absolute favorite, the Saffron palette. This is such a wonderful palette. The color combinations in here are perfect. Perfect! I like that there's two red colors. You can shear them out if you want for a transition color, which I honestly did not think was going to work, but they do. Oh, I just, this is one of my favorites. I love this palette. I've got two here by Juvia's Place. The first one is the Masquerade Mini Palette, and this one is so much fun to play with. I don't tend to use the bottom shades that much just because they're very neutral. I tend to play in the top two rows because they're a lot of fun. I love the quality on this. I think that Juvia's Place makes excellent eyeshadows. And next is the Zulu palette, which I feel like I picked up on a whim, mostly because the colors are quite enticing, but I have not reached for this as much as I would have liked, so I definitely need to make an effort to play with this one more. I have some smaller Smashbox ones here. This one is a blush palette. This is Culver City Corals, and they're all just a take on a coral shade. You've got like a more lighter highlighter one, a brighter one, and then a deeper one. I have one of their cover shot palettes here. This is the Pinks and Palms eyeshadow palette, and I really wanted to like this one, but I don't feel like I reach for it that often, just because I don't even know why. It looks pretty, but I think in practice, I found the color combination just didn't work out that well together. I also have the cover shot bold palette, which has long since been discontinued, but it was a rainbow palette, and I couldn't resist. The shadows are okay. I feel like they're a little bit patchy, and I feel like this color up here is a weird one to have in the palette, but it was fun to play with, although not the best quality from Smashbox. Next up are my Charlotte Tilbury eyeshadow quads. The first one I have here is the Rebel palette. Love the greens in this one. A lot of fun to play with that one. The next one is Vintage Vamp, which I think was the first one I ever bought, just because it had shades in here that were more likely to be a red tone. And I do really like this, but I find the variety between those two colors is practically non-existent. The next one here is the Dolce Vita palette, which is not dissimilar from Vintage Vamp, but there is a little bit more of a brown tinge to it. And then the last one I have here is called the Sophisticate, which is really just a matte palette. I have two Makeup Revolution palettes that I haven't played with yet, but I'll show them on camera. The first one is the Iconic Division palette, which I believe is a dupe for the Anastasia Subculture palette. And then the other one here is the Neutrals 2 palette. Next up is NYX, and I'll kick this off with their Off Tropic palette. This one is the Shifting Sands palette. Love this one. So much fun to play with these colors, mostly because I really like the oranges over here. I think it's a beautiful palette. And then the other Off Tropic palette is the Hasta La Vista palette, which is basically a rainbow palette, and I really enjoy this palette. The only color I felt was kind of eh was this hot pink one up here. It kind of forms hard pain. I also have the Ultimate Edit Mini palette. I love this one so much. It's a great one to bring with me on vacation if I just want like a pop of color. And it was kind of an extension of the Ultimate palette. And this is the Ultimate Brights palette. I use this thing constantly, at least once a week to amp up an eyeshadow color. I use a lot of these as transition colors. If I'm doing a colorful look and need a color that is similar to it, but is not too vibrant, I reach for this palette. I mean, these are bright, but I do feel like they're a little bit more pastel when you apply them through your crease. And then I have the Ultimate Phoenix palette. And this one is qu ooh, quite pretty. The shadows in here are really up my alley with the reds and the oranges. I've only played with this once or twice, but I did really enjoy the looks. And then I have Morphe. I'm not a huge Morphe fan, but I am a Jaclyn Hill fan, although that lipstick debacle lately, whew, I don't know what's going on there. I didn't buy anything, so I'm safe, but man, the girl cannot put out a launch without something bad happening. So anyway, I have the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. Um, I have it in the original packaging with no names on it and nothing on the back, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, it's okay. It's one of the better Morphe palettes that I've ever used. I've used other 35 pan palettes before and just really hated the quality, but this one was okay. I feel like it's very same, same through there, but it, it's okay in terms of quality. And then I have two of her vault collections. So I've got the Dark Magic palette. Really pretty colors in here. Pretty unique, I would say. I really like the looks that come out of here, especially when I'm using Potion. That is such a fun matte green color. And then the other one is Ring the Alarm. I thought that this was going to be more of a red themed palette, not really sure why, but it does turn out to be more like muted berry and orange, not red at all. 
I've got a bunch of sleek palettes here. I've got the Matte Darks palette, which is I think is actually the Ultra Mattes Volume 2. I just renamed it so that I knew what it was. Uh, this one's great. I reach for this palette quite a bit for the outer corner of my eye when I want a colorful outer corner matte color. I also have the Ultra Mattes V1, which I've called the Brights palette. And this is just like a bright, shadow color. They're not neon so they're easy to play with but they are very vibrant and a lot of fun. I have the original palette which so many people had this palette and I was so excited when I finally got my hands on it but everything's shimmery in here. The only one that's not is the black up here but the rest of them are all very shimmery. I also have the acid palette. This was my first foray into neon shadows and that's kind of when I learned how to work with them on my eye. Love the colors in here, but it's sadly been discontinued. And then the last one I have here is the Sunset Palette. Beautiful colors in here, and oddly, even though this row, or these three or four shadows all look the same, they actually come across very differently on the lid. Really like this palette. I also have this Blush Palette by Sleek. This is the Lace Trio, and I do actually reach for these colors quite a bit. Mostly the orange and the hot neon pink red at the end um, because the one in the middle is a little bit shimmery and I do prefer a matte blush but this was a staple for so many people over the years on YouTube and I'm still reaching for it and one that I haven't used yet but I just picked it up is the sleek solstice highlighting palette a lot of people raved about this for so many years and I only just recently got it so I'm eager to see what the hype is all about. I have two palettes here by Benefit and I've mentioned these so much recently you're probably tired of hearing about them but they are the mini cheek leader palettes. So this is the um, mini pink squad. It's got two blushes and a highlighter. Love it to absolute pieces. I can't rave about them enough. And then the mini bronze squad is equally amazing, but this one has a bronzer, a highlighter, and a blush. Love them so much. The last few palettes I have to talk about are all ones that I only have one by each brand. The first one on top is the Blush Tribe Neon Dreams palette. This is so pretty. It's so pretty. It's hard to work with because they are neon shadows, so you have to do a bit more of a patting motion than a buffing motion, but the payoff for the colors when you work with them is so so electric. I love this one. I've got the Colored Rain Queen of Hearts palette, which I was totally inspired to buy this because of Samantha. She put out so many good looks with this palette, and I purchased it because they looked so good on her. And the palette is good, and the quality is good, but I don't feel like I reach for it that often, which is a little bit disappointing. I have the Sauce Box Forbidden Fruits palette. This thing must be super ancient. Pretty sure I ended up with it in a declutter. But the colors in here are really nice. I play a lot with the red and the purples. Beautiful shadows. I have the Zoeva Matte Spectrum palette. I picked this up when I was in Australia, oh, about two years ago now. Love this so much. It's a rainbow matte palette, and I find the colors are so much fun to play with. I have the Laura Mercier Artist Palette. I love this one so much. So they've re-released the Artist Palette, but this was the holiday launch version for 2013. The shadows are, whew, digging my nail in. The shadows are fantastic in here. They are so good. They're smooth, they're blendable. The colors are glorious. I've got the Pinky Rose Bright Lights Palette. Another fantastic, oh no, a shadow just fell out. This is another fantastic palette, but I don't feel like I reach for it that often. And I'm not really sure why. Maybe I just forget about it. There we go, pop back in. But the colors are really fun. And I actually really like these pressed glitters. They go on just fine by themselves and they don't really move around that much. So I've really enjoyed this palette and I definitely need to bust it out more. Another favorite palette of mine, the Fenty Beauty Moroccan Spice Palette. I think it's permanent. For a long time I thought it was limited edition and that made me really sad because the colors in here are wonderful. I really like the red and all the colors around it work really well together, but I also like that there's some blues in here and golds. I feel like the palette was really well put together and I don't own anything else by Fenty from an eyeshadow perspective, but this one was so good that I would definitely be interested in trying other ones. I have the Maybelline Soda Pop palette. I bought this when I was in the US because it wasn't yet launched in Canada and I was so excited to see something fun by Maybelline. I hadn't been that drawn to the pink lemonade palette but this one I was super into and it's okay. I'm not as enamored with it as I thought I was going to be and I do reach for it occasionally but I just don't seem to be getting the look that I envision 
with this palette when I actually try it on my eyes. I don't know, I need to play with it a little bit more. I have the Sugar Pill Feline Fancy Palette. This one, to me, always feels like a face palette just because of the shapes of the pans and the colors in here. Like this looks like a bronzer, these look like highlighters, and I guess this one would maybe be a blush, but it is an eyeshadow palette, and I do really love the shade of this red. It's a shimmery red, and it's so beautiful. I have this Tease Riot palette. So this is the Extreme Riot, I think. And the colors in here, I mean, you know why I bought it. It's a rainbow palette. And the shadows over here are all mattes, and then these two are shimmery. And I really enjoy this palette. I did a pride look last year using this palette, and I still love that eyeshadow look so much. I have the Visart Editorial Brights palette. I love the shadows in here, don't get me wrong, but I think the price point is just way too high. A hundred bucks for this palette is unreal. They're really good, but they're not a hundred dollars good, if you get what I'm saying. So I do reach for this quite a bit. Some of these have some dents in here, but again, what a steep price point. I have this Stila face palette. This is the Sunset Serenade convertible color cheek and lip palette. And mine's a little bit broken, which is kind of annoying, but man, do I ever love these cream blushes. I don't reach for them very often because I don't think to use cream that often on my cheeks but the colors in here blend out so nicely on the cheeks. They're not super aggressive, but you can build them up. And every time I wear them, I'm just like, oh, it's so beautiful. I have this Hourglass Blush Palette. This is the Ambient Lighting ooh, Blush Palette. And this came out for holidays many moons ago, but I reach for this thing constantly. The colors in here are so pretty and they are permanent blushes for them, which is nice. So there's like Mood Exposure, Incandescent Electra, and then Luminous Flush. Such good blushes. I love hourglass blushes. I have this Quo highlighting palette. So this is the highlight and glow palette that came out for holidays just this past year. And I was lamenting the fact that it wasn't a permanent product because this is so unique for Quo. Quo never launches fun and exciting things until this one. And then somebody pointed out to me that they actually repackaged it and now have it as a permanent product. So if you live in Canada, go to Shoppers Drug Mart and get this palette. This is one of the best drugstore highlighting palettes that I've ever seen. And the colors are actually special. Like they're a little bit unique. They're not just your typical champagne color. I have this MAC eyeshadow palette that I'm currently testing out for a review. I'm wearing it right now. This is the Art Library Flame Buoyant Palette. <sighs> colors make me so happy. The reds in here are so beautiful. I'm really excited to be using this palette because I feel like it's been a long time since I've been in love with MAC eyeshadows. Not from a formula perspective because I think MAC does make good shadows, but just from like an interest point. I've been struggling with some of MAC's launches and just haven't been that into them until this one. So I've only played with it once today, but I'm excited to play with it more. I also have this Becca and Jaclyn Hill palette. This was the Champagne Glow face palette, I think. This is so good. I love this so much. The blushes up top are beautiful shades. And then there's two highlighters in here. I wear Champagne Pop quite a bit, although I've got it in a single format. Uh, I don't reach for the more gold toned one, but um, this is a beautiful palette. Then I have the Revlon Galaxy Dreams palette. They call this holographic, but let's get real. These are not holographic. I really wish people would stop calling duochrome holographic because it's not. This is so good. This is Revlon's answer to like the fun color highlighter phase that is slowly kind of disappearing, but I'm still deeply entrenched in it. There's a silver, a green, a pink, and then a more purple toned highlighter, and they are absolutely beautiful. And the very last palette I have to talk about is this one by NARS. This is the Hot Trist palette that just came out for, well just came out, it was like six months ago, for holidays 2018. And it took me a while to get my hands on it because it went in and out of stock so frequently. But I love this one so much. I don't reach for it very often because I've mentioned before that face palettes, for whatever reason, I tend to ignore my collection. But when I do reach for this, I am so happy with the colors in here. There's four blushes and two highlighters, and it's, I mean, it's just so pretty to look at. Okay, that was a lot. Those are all of the palettes that I own in my collection right now. I hope you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on every single one of them. Thank you so much for watching, especially if you've made it this far. And I will see you next time. Bye.